morning, everyone. Good to see everyone here this morning. Number 27 was called, so maybe we can start our service with number 27. When lost in the darkness of guilt and despair, sore cankered in heart by the sin that was there, Lord Jesus then found me and gave me release. He lifted me up to the plane of his peace. I'm sitting with Jesus, so oh wonderful grace. With him I am reigning in heavenly place. I'm filled with this glory, transported above. Yes, sitting with Jesus in heavenly love. Led captive by Satan, still deeper in sin. Enslaved to its scepter, so long I had been. But calling on Jesus, he severed the chain. Exalted my soul to the throne of his reign. I'm sitting with Jesus, so oh wonderful grace. With him I am reigning in heavenly place. I'm filled with this glory, transported above. Yes, sitting with Jesus in heavenly love. My conscience polluted and guilty defiled. I feared that upon me no mercy could smile, but glory to Jesus, his blood is applied. Now sanctified holy, I sit by his side. I'm sitting with Jesus, so oh wonderful grace. With him I am reigning in heavenly place. I'm filled with this glory, transported above. Yes, sitting with Jesus in heavenly love. My heart was all sadness in Satan's control. A stranger to heaven's love in my soul. And glory the Savior then shown from above. Transported my soul to the realm of his love. I'm sitting with Jesus, so oh wonderful grace. In him I am reigning in heavenly place. I'm filled with this glory, transported above. Yes, sitting with Jesus in heaven. Number 113 was called. 113.
and to follow the Lord. And he's took such good care of me uh, in every way. Tammy and I have talked about it. I don't know if the word spoiled is the right word to use, but I would be spoiled to anything else, else of how the Lord has took care of us. He's met our every need. He's been there through every trial, trouble, and I wouldn't want any other, any other way. We've had, I guess, the platinum package, you could say, because <laughs> the Lord's took care of us in, in all areas, and 40 years is a long time, and it stood, the Lord has stood the test of time for me, and he, he can do the same for you. I just encourage you, whatever stage you're in life, if you don't know the Lord, it's a good time to get, get enrolled in God's program because it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful life. And I, I just want to testify that for 40 years, the yes. Lord has been yes. my Savior in all needs, in spiritual needs, in emotion, financial. He just, he just took care of everything and time after time. So I, I'm satisfied of my decision that I made back in 79. Been some ups and downs, but every time the Lord's always been there to pick me up, carry me along. So praise the Lord for his goodness to me.
number 300. Yes. 
says, I am drinking at the fountain where I ever would abide. I thank the Lord for being saved. I thank the Lord for what he's done for me. You know, last night, Sister Jody asked that question about the song the young people sang. Did we really mean it? I thank the Lord I could say yes. I didn't get up and sung, but I was singing down in my seat. But I think back over the years, the Lord has been so faithful we sung the song 113 that says, I am satisfied. I can say that I am completely satisfied. There have been times that I have bought products uh, from Amazon, and I bought something recently, and it showed up. It was all broken, and, and half of the contents was spilled out. But when I got this gift of salvation, it wasn't that way. It was perfect. It was fulfilling. I, had, I was with a relative <clears throat> a few weeks ago, and they're not saved, and they don't understand all the things of God. They asked me, they said, do you think you'll ever leave the church? I said, oh, no. I've made up my mind to go this way. I'm satisfied. The Lord has been too faithful to me to turn back now. In three years, it will have been almost 20 years since the Lord has saved my soul. And it has been a tremendous blessing to serve him. I'm endeavoring to go all the way. He's been too faithful. He's been better to me in this life of salvation than the world could ever have been. I am so thankful. I can truly say it is possible to be saved and be a young person. It is possible to, to be saved and, oh, where I worked and I'm going into probably even a worse environment than where I just came from. But I remember being at work and hearing the conversations that people were having and to, to think that the scripture says the prince of the power of the air cometh and findeth nothing in me. That is such a wonderful blessing to be able to say there's nothing there. I, th I was uh, talking with the congregation there in Fresno and we were talking about how uh, in, I believe it's in Jude where Satan tried to fight over the bones of Moses and the, enemy, the angel said no, no that's mine I feel the same way there's nothing there that he can touch and claim as his this is a wonderful way to walk and I am so satisfied with the Lord
Thank the Lord for a Sunday morning with a tabernacle about half full. <laughs> Thank for each one's here. Uh, I appreciate Brother Randy's testimony. Uh, if you don't know Mother Randy, he hadn't had a life of rose, rose petals or a life of ease either, but the Lord seen him through it. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the goodness to me, the Lord to me. And uh, how he's helped me too. So uh, we'll take up, take time to take an offering. And uh, the boxes here are marked general ministers for the camp meeting sake, but uh, we'll take up one offering and we'll meet the expenses of the meeting and the expenses of the grounds, and then the rest of it will divide up to the ministers. So if you just put it in either side, be fine. So and, uh, may we have another song when we stand and take the offering.
Well, good morning. Sure good to see everyone here this morning. And uh, when I look out over the crowd here this morning, you know what I see? I see a lot of happy and contented sheep. <laughs> and I was thinking of some of the songs we've been singing this morning. It seems like the theme is being satisfied in the Lord. Uh, there's several songs we sang. Number 113, Satisfied in Jesus. We heard some testimonies about that. And Number 300, the third verse says, I am drinking at the fountain where I ever would abide, for I've tasted life's pure river and my soul is satisfied. You know there's a scripture and a promise about that too. It's in Proverbs, the, um, let me find it here. Proverbs, the 19th chapter, verse 23. It says, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. You know that's a promise. To those that truly fear and reverence the Lord, he has a promise to satisfy us. And when I think of someone or something that's satisfied, I think of livestock. Uh, you know, if you feed them well and protect them and provide for them all their needs, they're not going to be trying to jump in the fences and get into someone else's pasture or out in the road or running off. They're going to be content just to stay right where they're at, where they're being fed, where they're being provided for, where they're being comforted, all those things. And, and again, thinking of a sheep, that's what I see out here this morning, a lot of satisfied sheep. So thankful for that. Who else is thankful to be a satisfied sheep this morning? Thank the Lord. <laughs> to the world and show them how your grace can set them free. Please don't allow me to forget where you brought me from, but remind me, Lord, just where that I could be. Let 
Savior, have 
going through life seeking pleasure and fame till I realized that something was wrong for my follies
1, 19 through 22, talking about God. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. We're on the winning side with Jesus. Friend, if you're a sinner, you've already lost the race. Jesus' blood can take that sin and throw it in a deep blue sea. He can put an end to your last place living, give you the victory. I've read the back of the book and we win. No more living in darkness, we'll be living at home with him. There's no need to worry about it. If you're born again, I've read the back of the book and we win. Are you crushed by trial this day, this very hour? Satan has surrounded, you feel no hope or power. Just fix your eyes upon the Lord above your storm-tossed sea. Jesus fought the battle through, he is our victory. I've read the back of the book and we win. No more living in darkness, we'll be living at home with him. There's no need to worry about it if you're born again. I've read the back of the book and we win. I've read the back of the book and we win. Sister Lene, would, would you lead us in a, that first verse of the song again, please? Well, I'm so thankful this morning that I found what I needed. 
You find something, Brother Ivan? <laughs> Found in the Lord Jesus the answer to the needs that are in my life. And it wasn't just a one-time event. You know, we come this morning, I, I don't know why everyone is here. It is so wonderful, has been stated, to have this wonderful um, congregation, different ones come from many different places. I imagine the motivations that prompted different ones might have been a little bit different. But do you know there is something that we all have in common this morning, and that is that each one of us has needs in our life. But I am thankful that I found, as did many of you, you found the answer, and it was in Jesus Christ. Like us, if you would, to turn with us to the third chapter of Mark and desire and interest in your prayers that the Spirit of the Lord would just bless and lead how he would today. Third chapter of Mark, beginning with verse 1, it said, And he entered, this is talking about Jesus. He entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And if anyone here this morning has a withered hand, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. But this is the condition that a man had when he also went to the synagogue. And they watched him. It was speaking about the Pharisees. They, they watched the man that had and looked and were watching Jesus. And they said whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. Isn't that a beautiful story? But you know that this is more than just a fairy tale. This was something that happened that Jesus went to the synagogue. Now, the synagogue was a place of worship. It was a place where people would come to, yes, they socialized there. They did charitable work at the synagogue. But Jewish life revolved around the synagogue. It was a place they would come to hear the word of God. It was a place they would come to pray. A place they would come to worship. And I believe that should be the essence and primary reason we are here this morning. We are here to worship God. But the reality is here, not everyone came to connect with God. There were Pharisees there, and they were out to try to catch Jesus breaking the law of Moses. They were there with suspicion. They were there with um, the desire to be critical. Do you know that there are, there are the same thing is in the world today? People sometimes come to places of worship, and they're there to be critical. I'm not here to connect with God, but I, I'm just kind of looking around and seeing what everybody else is doing to where I can kind of judge them to make myself feel just a little bit better. Do you know nothing has changed? It was that way then, and it's that way now. And yet, there were those that came with a desire to hear about God. There were hypocrites do you realize that it was a mixed multitude that followed Christ when he was here in the flesh? I know that sometimes people can get discouraged when they look around and they say, well, they're not living like they ought to live, and, and they're a hypocrite, and that person is judgmental. But, you know, it was that way with Christ. Even one of his disciples was unclean. Today... The same thing. But we don't want to be discouraged this morning because there are still those that have a desire to follow Jesus. 
There are still those that have noble intent and purpose of heart that I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to hear what God has for me to say. This morning, it is not for any of us to be looking around and saying, what are they going to do? Because if we have that kind of mentality, the enemy will satisfy you with something. He will cause you to find someone to kind of focus your attention on to be critical of. But there was also a man that had a withered hand. A hand that was paralyzed. A hand that had been drawn up and in many cases almost dried up. In other words, his hand did not function. And I have found, just personal experience, but when I was in a bad place physically, I'll just say it, I know I kind of looked a sight sometimes, couldn't control my body motions all the time, and some of you all remember I do a lot of jerking, and I will tell you it's interesting how people respond to you. When, when maybe someone looks and they think something's not right, and some people will just turn away, I don't want to look at it. And sometimes there are purposes I don't want to embarrass you, but... And then other times you people are studying. I want to figure out what's going on. I, I remember one time I went to, was in the airport and I was in a wheelchair and I, I couldn't hardly walk. And my wife was there and I was flying and she wasn't. So I had my ticket and I handed it to the agent and they wouldn't look at me. They looked at my wife and were asking her questions about my travel plans and they wouldn't look at me. And I thought, sir, I, I didn't tell him this. I was like, I, I know what's going on. I, I mean, I can communicate and I can talk, but they were uncomfortable. Here, there was a man with a need. It was a physical need. And there were, I am sure, people that wouldn't look at him and others were looking. The Pharisees were there looking at Christ saying, is he going to heal him on the Sabbath day? Because the Sabbath day is reserved for worship. Do you know that Jesus and the essence of his teaching was that man was not made for the Sabbath. But the Sabbath was made for man. In other words, we are never to put God in a box. We are never to say, God, now this is the convenient time for you to work. This morning, God wants to work wherever he can, whenever he can. He is not limited by our times of convenience. And the Pharisees were looking on with that critical spirit. They should have been coming saying, Lord, Jesus, I want you to do something for me. Do you know all of us fit within one or two categories this morning? We have either been touched by the Lord Jesus and we've opened up our heart to him or we haven't. These Pharisees could have left that synagogue that day. They could have left changed people. But there is one that left a changed man, and that was the man that had a need. Well, Pharisees were looking to accuse. And the Pharisees knew that Jesus had a history of healing. Because when they saw Jesus, and they saw a man with a withered hand, he was like, okay, what's going to happen now? Do you know what Jesus can do this morning? Do we believe that Jesus Christ still has the power and the ability to work miracles? Do we still believe that? Where are we today? We're in a place of worship, aren't we? But whether we receive of what the Lord has for us has much to do if we will believe in the power that God has for us. We can come to the service today and we can leave no difference. But if we have a need in our life, we can come to the Lord Jesus with expectation that, Lord, I still believe in your power. I still believe that you can work miracles. The Pharisees had seen the miracles of him. They had seen Jesus, I'm sure, touch the blinded eyes. They had seen Jesus reach out and touch the leper and seen the leper cleanse of his leprosy. 
They have seen Jesus reach out and deliver those that were possessed of evil spirits. And so they knew that there was a power there, and yet they were not willing to open up their heart and say, Lord, I want you to do something in my life. Do we still believe? They knew what he had done because Jesus came for the purpose of ministering to needy people. Jesus came not to those that were well. Jesus came to those that were sick. Those that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Do you know the Lord is looking on each one of us this morning and he knows the, the needs that are in our life? And we come together and you all look beautiful. You all look beautiful. You know, we, we knew it was service and we, we, I'm sure most of you looked in the mirror this morning and you want to you know, you look good and you come and you put on your nice clothes and we had a wonderful song service and we're here to worship. But do you know that we are still human? We still have needs. The Lord has blessed in this meeting, but do you know that we're going to go home? And we're going to go back to life, and we're going to go back to work, and we're going to go back to school, and you're going to go back in your marriages, in your relationships as parents and children. And we're going to go back, and what is life going to be like then? Because I'm not in the synagogue anymore. I'm not in a place of worship, and yet Jesus came to open up blinded eyes. He came to set captives free. Amen. He came to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And this morning, if there are needs in your life and you have tried and you have tried to overcome and you have tried to make changes and it seems like you keep falling in to the same pattern of failure and pretty soon you start accepting that this is just me. This is just the way it's going to be and I'm going to have to settle for this. Let's not forget the divine, miraculous power of Jesus Christ this morning. Jesus is still working miracles. Brother, and I'll put a little plug in here. Brother DeMar started a podcast. First one last week came out and he was interviewing Brother Donnie Elwell. Brother Donnie was sharing his testimony and before he got saved, he had tried to stop cussing. And he had tried, and he said he'd, he'd, do, he'd stop for a few days, and, but he was, it was habitual. It was who he was. He had grown up hearing it. He had heard it his whole life, and it's just what instinctively came to his mind and came out of his mouth. And he would try to stop, but it didn't last very long. And he said that the Lord had been talking to him, and he said that then he was like, Lord, the Lord was bringing conviction. He said, God, he said, if you will break the power of cussing in my life, he said, I'll think about getting saved. From that moment on, he didn't cuss anymore. He had tried. He had tried in his own strength. And he said, I believe it was about two weeks later, he realized. He realized that I'm not cussing anymore. It's not even coming to my mind. How did that happen? It was because the power of God. It was because Jesus came to those of us that have needs in our life. And we can say, I've tried to do it. But there is a power this morning that can do something divine in your life. I, I agree that there are things in our life that we grow in. We grow in grace. We grow in areas. And there's a process of healing that takes place. But I never want to minimize the divine, instantaneous, miraculous power of Jesus Christ to do in our lives what I tried to do so long. And so Jesus went in and he looked at that with the man with the withered hand. And those were looking on. So what are you going to do now? And Jesus said, stand forth. In other words, stand up. Do you realize that with our needs, who of us here likes to stand up and everybody look at our needs? We like to cover up our needs, don't we? We don't want everyone to know our needs. And Jesus just, he said, stand up. Stand forth. 
You know, Jesus is still breaking power of addictions. He is still giving power to forgive. When someone has done you wrong, there is still a divine power of Jesus Christ that you can leave it at an altar of prayer and go forth with forgiveness and love in your heart for those that haven't done you right. A withered hand. Does anybody have a withered hand this morning? I'm speaking spiritually. Something that is hindering your functionality. Something that is hindering you. I know I've shared this, but if you will allow me. Two couple years ago in Tanzania, there was a young lady. Her name was Mictalita, 17 years old. Her grandfather was a witch doctor. And it is the purpose of, of witch doctors to get a spirit into one of their relatives. And this young woman was possessed with evil spirits. They could, she could not stay in school. She had to leave school. She was not in control of her mind. And she would wander the streets in the night. And her parents, it came to the place that they were literally tying her down to keep her because the enemy had control of her life. Two years ago, they heard that there was going to be a gospel meeting. And their mother was about ready to just turn their daughter over to the, witch, to the witches. Because they couldn't do anything. They had tried to get help and there was no help. And they were about just to give her over to them. But they heard that there was a gospel meeting. There are some people down here that believe in the power of Jesus Christ. And this mother brought her daughter and they walked for many, many miles. I believe it was more than a day, if I'm not mistaken. They walked and they came to the meeting. After the message went forth, she brought her daughter down. The ministers that were there, we gathered around her and started to pray. And she fell on the ground and was writhing and contorting and screaming. And the spirit was fighting that. A little bit later, we all gather now for more prayer. Do you know that the Lord instantaneously delivered that young lady? She is in her right mind today. We got home and I called back and I said, how is Mick Toledo? And she said, she's well. She's gone back to school. Jesus Christ broke the power of Satan. There is no power that you face tonight that is greater than the power of Jesus Christ. It is, wor it is working still today. He can stop you're cussing. He can stop the pornography. He can stop the, the power. He can give you grace to forgive the things that are hindering you from being all that God wants you to be. Do you brothers today, we heard last night, there is a power that can enable you to be that man. But many times people are settling for less than a victorious experience. I've tried and I've struggled <clears throat> But do you know that man with the withered hand, where was he? Where was he? He was at the synagogue. There was nothing wrong with his feet. <clears throat> there was nothing wrong with his feet. I'm, I want to be here. I want to learn about the Lord. I want, it, what, I want from God something. Do you know I believe this morning in a life of victory? I believe in a life of power. I believe that the Lord Jesus can restore broken marriages this morning. The withered hand. There are many homes that are in trouble. But if we were, and I know people don't talk about a lot, but I know this morning that there are marriages here that were on the edge of breaking. And the Lord Jesus came in and restored that which was broken. Jesus is in the restoring business. He wants to do that this morning. And yet this man had a desire to be in synagogue. He wanted to worship. He wanted to learn about God. I believe that there are many today that believe in the Lord. And they want to serve the Lord. But they've got something hindering their functionality. You may be here this morning. It's Lord, I'm here. I'm here. I want to serve you, but... I've got a withered hand. You know, there's a little bit more to that story about the withered hand. In the fourth, in the fourth century, 
Uh, Jerome was a historian, theologian, and it is recorded that when the Gospel of Matthew, this account is also in Matthew, that the story is told specifically of this man, and his name was Caimentarius. And they said that he was a bricklayer. And he came to Jesus, and I will just quote from history. <clears throat> Thank you. They said that he was a bricklayer, and he applied himself to Christ this way. Lord, I'm a bricklayer, and I have got my living by my labor. And I beseech thee, O Jesus, restore me the use of my hand, that I may not be obliged to beg my bread. No, the Lord does not want us to be, to live in a state as a spiritual beggar, but we were all there. Lord, I can't do this by myself. Lord, I need help. I'm, I, I want to work. I want to function. But many times there are things in our lives, and number one, it's sin. Sin will hinder your functionality. If there is sin in your life, there is a power this morning that can break the power of sin. But I'm going to go, go a step further now. Even after we have been saved, and even after we have received the Holy Spirit, things happen in life. Come to the Lord more than one time said, Lord, I've taken this example. said, Lord, I've got a withered hand. I, something's hindering me. It's hindering my functionality. It might be something that I'm struggling with myself. It might be something that was a weakness for me. Been times that maybe it was someone else. It was just a real trial. And I felt like, Lord, it's, it's hindering my functionality. But the Lord wanted to do something right here. The Lord wanted to come in and do a work in my life that, I would, that, he would, that the enemy would not cause circumstances or people or things to hinder what God wanted to do in my life. If you feel like you're a beggar this morning, you are not alone. I want you young people to know something. If it feels like that you are struggling with things that... You would rather cover up because no one will understand. I want you to know that there is a body of people here this morning that were where you are. To those that are struggling in your marriage this morning. And it may seem like you are just, you're just coexisting and you're making it, but it's not real functional. I want you to know that there are others that have been where you are. But there is a power in the Lord that can begin to transform and work and restore that which is broken and dried up. But do you know that we have some responsibility? This man, the story that was told at this time was that this man was open to it. When Jesus said, stand forth, <clears throat> that man stood forth. I don't want everyone to know. I don't want everyone to see me like this. I... I can't in Jesus. And there's a lot more in this parable, but the crux here this morning is that Jesus said, stretch out thine hand. Stretch out thy hand. And you know the instinctive response would be, I can't. You're telling me to do something I cannot do because it's dried up. It's paralyzed. I can't do it. And how many times do you think that man probably massaged his hand and maybe put ointment on it and tried to do something to get life back in his hand? He was still lame. And yet he still kept coming to synagogue. I still want to know about the Lord. I want to do what I can, but I'm a beggar. But Lord, I want to be productive in the kingdom of God. Lord, I want, I want to work for you. Do you know this morning there are things in people's lives that will hinder your effectiveness in the work of God? There are things that will hinder the anointing of God in your life. From song leaders to Sunday school teachers to ministers. 
There are things in life sometimes that will hinder the effectiveness of the Lord working in and through you. What are we going to do with those things? Are we going to keep coming to synagogue and go home the same way that we came in? Or will we be willing to listen to the Lord when he said, stand forth, stand up. And you know what happens when someone stands up? Everybody looks at you. And yet, Jesus said, stretch out thine hand. I've already done that. It hasn't worked. Don't keep trying. I've already, I've already prayed. You know how many times I've come? I, we were just in Jefferson last week. We were in Jefferson, Oregon, and my dad loves to tell this story, and I, it does not embarrass me, and I'll just tell it again here this morning. It doesn't embarrass me. My dad, when they were, he's told many young person this. He said, do you see from that bench right there up to the altar? He said, the carpet's worn right there. He said, you can see the carpet. He said, I'm sorry about the carpet, the condition of it. But he said, my son sat right there. It was a path. I'm not ashamed of the path this morning. Because I'm going to walk it again. When I find that my hand is drying up. And I, Lord, here I am. Here I am again. I, Lord, I'm struggling here. Got another need in my life. But look, folks, we know where to go this morning. Isn't that wonderful? We know where to go. But we have to believe in the power of God. When he told this man, stretch out thine hand, that man in faith didn't say, well, I, I can't. He stretched out his hand. And when he did it in faith, what happened? It was restored. It was just like his other good hand. That is what the Lord will do for us in our life this morning. But we have to believe the enemy is trying to hinder our faith this morning. I know that we can, all, we can say I believe in God, but when it comes to my problems and my needs, all of a sudden it seems like the enemy is wanting to hinder our faith and belief. Do you remember when the disciples were out on the ship the sea of tiberius and they had been fishing all night and they had caught no fish and jesus came along and he asked him he said do you um do you catch anything and i said well no lord we've we've toiled all night we haven't caught anything and jesus said let down your nets let down your nets for a draught and it's like you could respond when the Lord says, tells us what to do. And said, Lord, I've already done it. I've already tried that. But Peter said, nevertheless, you know, we've, we've been doing it, Lord. We've been trying this and it, there's no fish. But nevertheless, it's the way the scripture says it. Nevertheless, at thy word, we'll let down our nets. And you all know the end of that story. They let their nets down and they caught a great amount of fish that the nets began to break. Now, was that not a miracle? But they had to let their nets down. This man had to stretch out his hand. What are we willing to do this morning to access the power of God? We need to be obedient this morning. We need to be doing the things that we know God wants us to do. If we're not doing what we know to do, don't expect a miracle. But we've got to believe. I believe that the Lord can do this. It is not about self-empowerment. It is not about what I can do for me. I can overcome this. It's about acknowledging I've got a withered hand. But Lord, I'm going to come to you in faith, believing that you can do something divine for me. And so, when he obeyed, the Lord worked a miracle. Many times, I've seen this, people with a withered hand, they will bring their coat sleeve down around it. Have you all seen that? And they'll cover that up so you can't see it. Do you know why? Because they're embarrassed. They don't want everybody looking at it. 
You know, I think that's what a lot of us do sometimes with our withered hands. With the things that we know, and I know that, that what that withered hand represents can be very different in our lives this morning. But many times we try to cover those things because sometimes we might feel shame. I don't want someone to know I'm struggling with that. I don't want someone to know that I have had that kind of problem. I don't want someone to know that I'm struggling in my marriage and I'm just not being the husband or the wife that I ought to be. I don't want someone to know that I've been acting like that to my parents and, or this is something so personal in my life and I'm just going to have to get through it by myself because I'm ashamed to let people know do you know that there are so many testimonies that could be given here this morning about the Lord taking shameful things and giving victory where there was shame? So will we continue to hide? Will we continue to cover and next time we meet together at 2 o'clock, there's another service. We'll come back to synagogue, if you'll allow me to use that term. We'll come back to worship the same as we are this morning? Or will we be the one that stands up when we hear the Lord call our name? He said, stand up. He said, stretch out thy hand. And the Lord will begin to do something divine in your life if you will believe this morning. In our culture, now I, I mentioned that sometimes people like to cover because of embarrassment and shame. But you know what's happening in our culture today? The withered hand is almost becoming a badge of honor. I am a victim. Used to people would like to cover their victimhood. Today in our culture, it's almost a badge of honor that I want you to know what I'm going through. I want you to know how I was mistreated. I want you to know I can't do that because of this. I don't want you to expect anything of me because this is how they treated me. This is why I'm not functional is because you know those people. You know my family. You know how when I was a child this happened. And it's almost become a badge of honor. And people are proud of it because they start accepting I am a victim. This is me. You don't know how my husband is. You don't understand him. And I want everybody to know what I'm having to live with. And they almost take it as a badge of honor. You know this morning that what is broken, the Lord wants to heal. Where we have lost hope, the Lord wants to restore hope. Where you are struggling, the Lord does not want us to cover it, nor does He want us to exalt it. He would rather it be healed this morning by coming to the Lord and stretching out our hand and saying, Lord, here is my need. Do you know that the needs that are represented here this morning and the healings that are represented cover so many things, so many things. You are not alone this morning, but the Lord. The Lord wants to bring healing yes. to the withered hand. He wants to do something new. He wants to make you functional. He wants to give you release from what has been binding you. He wants to give you power where you have been weak. And where you have not had strength, the Lord wants to do something divine for you. The withered hand, he said, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. This morning, when Jesus passes by our way, we can be spectators. We can just be there to look and observe, see what's, what's going to happen, what's going to go on. Or we can acknowledge in our own life that, Lord, I've got a withered hand. And I need your help. 
And in faith, I'm going to reach out to you. And when we do that this morning, the Lord is going to be faithful that we do not have to leave here this morning the same. But we can leave changed because of the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number 408. Now I come, my Lord and Savior, humbly kneeling at thy feet. Sharing in thy richest favor, full salvation, pure and sweet, Lord, I will. Yeah.